Honestly, I was in disbelief. I was in disbelief when the weather reports came out. Uh, we went through the standard of uh, purchasing water, canned goods, filling the tubs up with water, uh, having the necessary staples uh, just in case of power out. Funny enough, my friend actually had a birthday dinner scheduled and his girlfriend was trying to plan it and coordinate it. And I told her, if you look at the forecast, there's a big hurricane coming. And she's like, that stuff never happens. That stuff never hits. Nothing's ever gonna come of it. And you know, that was Harvey. And so the irony of that, um, I think it caught everyone off guard because there's so many false alarms. I remember um, uh, Sunday night at 2 a.m. or actually it was Monday morning, 2 a.m. of the hurricane. This little girl came in and she was like seven years old. She was wet like she'd been swimming. Her and her parents had waded up the feeder road to get to here. And uh, she came inside this cold air conditioned building from the hot sultry uh, night and she was shivering and freezing. Her parents didn't speak in English. And she said, cuck, 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 can we uh, uh, stay here tonight? And that just kind of broke my heart. So I'll, I'll always remember that. choked up. Uh, it, was, it was devastating to see um, floodwaters coming in from every corner of the house uh, uh, and nothing you can do about it, just the invasion of water and then finally the waters came together and then it just began to rise and we start praying and crying and uh, it, it was devastating. We actually found out in the morning, early morning, like around six in the morning because my dog actually woke us up. She was making noise in the living room and when we went into the living room we saw that water was dripping from the window. What was different about Hurricane Harvey was it was so widespread and so much devastation. It destroyed so many people's homes, their cars, their, their schools. So it was just, we've had a lot of floods and a lot of natural disasters in Houston, but generally it's localized. This was over the entire area. One million cars were totaled in the Houston area. Just a, uh, a, a flood of biblical proportion, I think what was different about it was the enormity and the amount of damage it, it, it caused. Absolutely feeling a hopelessness, helplessness because there's nothing you can do, nothing no one else can do to get to you. We became an island for about 12 hours. Uh, the only way you could get to our city or out of our city was by way of a boat. The journey to the shelter alone was really long. Like after we did get rescued from the boats, we got dropped off on 610 and right there we had to wait about two hours for them to rescue more people and they're rescuing people through the boats, through helicopters. But the way we got there, we were put in like dump trucks or like any truck really that can fit people in. And when we were getting off, there was cameras in our faces. Like some people were like drenched in water, shivering with the camera right there. But y'all sit here, y'all trying to interview people during their worst times. Like that's not the smartest thing to do. Like people Sorry. are really breaking down and y'all sitting here with cameras and microphones trying to ask us what the f is wrong with us. So and you really trying to understand with the microphone still in my face. With me shivering cold, with my kids wet, and you still putting a microphone Sorry. in my face. Sorry. Rosa Flores, uh, it sounds like you've got a very upset family there. Uh, we're going to take a break uh, from that. Uh, First three words of the Constitution are we the people, that's community. And that we is a big loose network of people who have to be committed to each other, to do good in times of need, times of despair. So uh, for me, this was an opportunity to go out. I, I've been fed by people I, I don't even know. I've worked in people's houses I hadn't met before who I'll, I will never see again. But I want them to know they can have faith in the greater good who we are, that we're going to help each other. And I've enjoyed it. It's been a great opportunity and it's been very rewarding. I've enjoyed working with the students and the homeowners and I've uh, you know, enjoyed helping try to put the city back and do our little part to help put it back together. One piece of sheetrock and you know, one piece of wood at a time. When Hurricane Harvey hit and people were you know, scrambling because they had water in the house and needed a place to stay. The least we could do was open up this store and the store in Richmond Gallery Furniture and let people in and let them sleep on our numerous Tempur-Pedic mattresses. One of the hardest things about disaster relief is organization after it because initially 
there's a lot of outpouring of support and um, positive response and everyone wants to help. But as time progresses, that help slowly starts to wane. So UH Cares is trying to establish and is establishing a long-term recovery effort. Recovering from Harvey is gonna take years um, to happen. So by sort of setting the groundwork now and by getting a connection and a network of students tied to specific volunteer opportunities, we're gonna be able to continue to support those efforts for a long time. We need to get people back to work, which, which is happening. We need to get homes repaired and people back into their homes. We need to get the uh, kids back in schools. A lot of the schools have been closed. We need to get the schools fixed up, get the kids back in school. And uh, we need to restore our, our faith. I think Houston will come back. Houston is coming back. But we've all got to continue to work together, not worry about politics. We need to focus on people. One of the things that people need most is hope. You know, I have somebody today that their husband died 10 days ago, so she's dealing with that on top of having to go in and, you know, get everything out of her home. I have a 72-year-old blind man who was living there during the flood. He has nobody, nobody to bring him anywhere, nowhere to go. Uh, and he was living in mold, and he's sleeping bed next to mold, and he didn't even see or realize what he was living in. So we go in and we get the homes, but we also take care of those homeowners and let them know that we're there for them. We give them hope, um, which is something that they really need. And then after that, the Cajun Army will partner with rebuilding groups that come in uh, and it's great because we can give them our priority ones, which they start with, and they can start rebuilding from there. So it's it's very from the beginning, Cajun Navy comes in, Cajun Army comes in, we're here for the long haul, and then we have all of our rebuilding groups that come in to help out with efforts. I actually got to, I worked some rounds in the uh, different halls. I talked to a couple people and helped um, some of them, and one of them was a elderly woman, and she actually didn't have any ice for her insulin, and she, her insulin was a specific brand, and just to see like, you know, she lost everything in the home. She was there with her dogs. Um, she was also wheelchair bound and she was just telling me about her story about how like terrifying it was when the water started coming up and no one was there to rescue her for almost 18 hours. And just to hear those stories up front just reminds you just like how impactful that storm was for others. Like it may not have impacted you, but how much you can also offer and how much you can help in the community. Out of brokenness, there came a blessing. Out of the burden, there came benefits. Out of the pain, there became peace. The nation was truly coming together. People from all over the world were sending donations and coming out to help. So yes, it's amazing that out of the travail of a mother's birth comes the joy of a baby in her arms. It's, it's so humbling to see people who have lost everything, you know? And I think what's, what surprised me the most was the positive attitude that everyone took to it. They lost their house, they lost all their possessions, they don't have a place to live, and they still managed to put a smile on their face. And I think being in situations like this, it puts everything into perspective, because you realize that as long as you have the people that you love around you, the other stuff doesn't really matter so much. So I'm fortunate that I didn't suffer any losses, but it really makes me think, I don't need all this junk that's in my room. You know, that's not what gives me happiness in my life. That's not what's fulfilling to me. Um, and to see homeowners and to, to hear stories from friends who went through that and to, and then to go in, the, in houses and realize that people's lives, their entire lives in these houses is gone. And you, see, you drive down the streets and you just see piles of stuff. It's, it's definitely overwhelming, um, but it really, really puts, I think, the big picture of life into perspective. To see people that you never met, never ever thought you'd meet, paths wouldn't cross, nothing you ever had in common uh, to bring you together, uh, but a flood called Harvey amidst a nation that was at the brinks of, 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 of war between races, uh, come together, white, black, Hispanic, Asian, Puerto Ricans, you name it, came together. One lady from Friendswood came by our house. We were taking clothing and debris out of the house. And she says, we want to do something to help. And she says she wanted to wash some of our shirts that we had thrown away. And I said, well, they're in the trash. She took them. I don't know what her and the ladies in our community did, but they washed them, brought them back, and the shirts are good. And so it's amazing to see how people you never met, never thought you'd meet, came together for the common good of humanity. That beneath 
the pigmentation of our skin color, our heart, our morals are in alignment with creation, that we work together. Thank you.